about the communications between uh, the city of South Jordan and perhaps your local uh, EOC, or Emergency Operations Center. We don't have to worry about that. That's taken care of by other groups of people. Okay? Nor do we have to worry about, for just us, the communications between our emergency command center and our local command center. If you don't know the difference between them, um, the command center is really the, the closest emergency operational place where you would live. The next step would be your block captain, if we think of that way. So your neighborhood block would, would communicate up to a, a command center or a CC, as we have on the board here. And then from the command center will be an EOC, Emergency Operations Center. And from there we can communicate out to the city hospitals or <coughs> emergency centers. So if you look at your handout number one, if you have one, it actually has this diagram on there. Most people don't have it yet. That's why I drew it up on the board. So really, this communication chain to the hospitals, emergency services, we generally don't have to worry about in emergency. Would you agree with that? Right. Not normally, because if there's no telephones, right, we wouldn't be calling those people. Sure, we'd want to get a hold of them, but there may be other people who need them more. So generally, we don't have to worry about this communication chain, nor do we worry about this communication chain. And this would be where our block captains uh, would communicate to a command center. Okay, so orienting ourselves to this type of communication, what we're worried about is this one, is the home. What I mean by home is this way, this communication. That's what we're talking about tonight. And that is your family members. Your family members to family members. So if you have children and something happened in the middle of the day, where would your children be? Hopefully at school, if it's a weekday. And how would you get a hold of your children at school? The next question is, what kind of information would you want your children to know? You want to know where they are, great. You want to make sure they know something, how to handle the situation. So what are some other things you would want your kids to know, or what kind of communications information you want to exchange between the, yourself and the loved one? But just anyone? Might want to know some phone numbers or the names of parents and yeah. grandparents. Yeah. And yourself <laughs> wants to know that information and you want your person on the other end, right? The adjacent box we're going to call it from now on. The adjacent box could be children, parents, loved ones, family members, uh, friends, family, okay? So the adjacent box. What else would you like that person to know? That you're okay. That you're okay and that they're okay. Yes, sir, you had your hand raised. Okay, excellent. How about, okay, let's go ahead. Maybe when you'll be reunited. Oh, yes, your ETA. When do you expect to be reunited again? Perfect question. Yes? You can't forget, it might be the final words. Yes, but let's not go there. We're going to have happy endings. <laughs> well, when it comes to box to box, I was just thinking about the airplanes. Box to box, we're thinking happy endings here. Yes. And the location of where you would be. Location. How about if the other person is injured? You want the local authority to know if there's any allergies with that person, or some medical history, right? So there's a lots of things we need to think about when we talk about family communications. It's more than, are you okay? Yes, I'm just fine. Bye. Would you become frustrated if that was the extent of your conversation? Oh, heavens yes. They're okay, great. Number one worry's over with. The next one would be, where are you? Can you get home? Uh, that, 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 that. So you can think of a lot of different things. So. This is the box-to-box -box communication that we're going to talk about. We will touch on some of these other type of communications. You know, how will this work out for us? But for right now, this is what we're going to focus on. Any questions as we dive into this fun yes, maze? Is, yes. Is the CC the block captain then? 
CC is generally, and the way this neighborhood has set it up, or this stake has set it up, the command center would be where the block captains would report to. Okay, so there's a block captain between so the So generally we'll have a block captain sitting right here. Okay. Okay. So the CC is the stake. No, the CC would be your ward house in, the, in this stake. So the CC, I neglected to put in the block captains for a reason. It's just cumbersome. So we have our home to our block captains, to our command center, to the stake, and this stake, this how in this neighborhood, this is how it's all brought out. But generally, we're talking CERT now, truly CERT is from our home to our block captains to our command center, wherever that may be, to our emergency operations center, wherever that may be. So the CC is in the Ward uh, Emergency Preparedness Coordinator. Yes. Not necessarily the bishop. It's not the bishop. It better not be the bishop. He's got other things to do to worry about. He's worried about personnel. Okay. He's worried about other things. That is not the bishop. Okay. Um, So, so now, the, the thought is, as I've drawn it here, is that you happen to be home and all your family members home when an emergency occurs. Now, please, let's think of things beyond just a big earthquake or, you know, something dramatic happens in the valley. It doesn't have to be so extreme that we think it will never happen. What's kind of emergency could occur that could inhibit your communication with your family members? A fire in the house. A fire! Oh my heavens, yes. You ran out of the house. Oh, my telephone's in there. Okay, what else? I mean just the electric lines going down because of a car accident. Oh, car accident. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that could happen that would make it so you're unable to communicate with somebody. Now, I'll tell you it's a little bit easier because we have cell phones, right? Most people have cell phones and most of the kids have cell phones. However, there are some situations where you can think of that you'd be stuck, correct? Okay, so now, uh, what if you're actually at work, you're at work, your kids are at school, and your other spouse is doing errands, and now something happens. Now what do we do? Well, uh, I guess the, the uh, most basic thing is that you've already discussed where you would meet if you have a if there's a, such an emergency. Have you done that? I have, as a matter of fact. Excellent. Um, and uh, we've even discussed how we cross the okay. river and everything. Um, but if you have at least a cell phone, uh, you could text or you could call. Sure, sure. I'm trying to get you to think that an emergency is not always convenient. right? And where are we going to be and how can we really work the technologies that's available to us. This is my whole discussion. This is the beginning of what we're going to discuss later on. Yes? Well, what if it was a tornado like we had a couple of years back and it took out the cell towers? So you wouldn't be able to have cell phone communications. Um, we're at work, we're at school, we're running errands, and we don't know where, where we're, we're going to meet up or when. Well, uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a minute, okay? A tornado happens once every who knows when, right? Happens often in Salt Lake. Um, but what happened to the cell phone lines after the tornado? Were they all damaged? No. But could you make a phone call? No. Why? Everybody's making a phone call, right? So it doesn't have to damage the whole network to become inoperable. 